Good morning, folks. We got to play uh, RQG last night. Touching the table, making the camera bounce. Okay, so interesting session. Um, there was this deal with the uh, the shaman and his fetch, where they're trying to use the fetch as a spy to infiltrate, kind of thing. And when we initially were using the fetch, it was just op, out, out of control. Um, so as I studied more and tried to make sense of, of rules and, you know, uh, evaluating my perception of um, the, the spirit plane versus the middle world, and, or I guess the spirit world, spirit world and the middle world interaction, and um, trying to rein in the uh, supposed superpowers of the fetch. Um, I was evaluating the situation. So the, the party um, last time had decided to use the fetch to uh, move forward, you know, to, and determine how many people are there and how strong they are versus, you know, as far as their power is concerned and that sort of thing, right? Um, but as I was going through my preparation for it yesterday, you know, that specific piece, I realized there are spirits on the spirit plane there um one one in particular and since some of my players watch these things i don't want to give away too much but so there was going to be spirit combat on the spirit in the spirit world um that was start of the session but that player unfortunately was was going to be late and so as we were just just the players were all discussing you know what to do and options you know do we want to try this try to have this spirit combat thing happen without the player running the, the fetch actually here or not because there are some significant consequences um because the fetch is a spirit if it goes to zero magic points it can be captured <laughs> Um, which is actually how I uh, brought in uh, the previous shaman we had. It was a short time for a player. But anyway, I digress. So, and, you know, trying to describe, okay, we've got this, this ruins on, on this ridge line. Um, obviously, at one point, there was traffic to it, and, you know, it was a, it was a community kind of thing. It was a, it was a temple complex, right? So there's stuff happening here. But, you know, not for hundreds of years. So we got this ruined compl uh, temple complex, and you've got, you know, the area around it that, you know, had been, you know, maybe fields, but, well, there have been fields, right? And then you got roads, and you're just flat, you know, flat, right? No real growth, okay? Well, there's years it's grown up. I don't know if there'd be trees there or not. Probably. I did not think about it. Maybe there would have been some more trees. But I described it as, you know, open field, bushes grasslands, that kind of thing, right? And then further out, you've got the actual tree line, right? And we kind of guessed the tree line, maybe 100 meters kind of thing. And, you know, now, now that I think about it, if you got a temple complex, you're going to have a city here, too, and it would have been destroyed at about the same time. Um, maybe I should have made this bigger. I don't know. Anyway. So, you can get in, you know, to 100 meters. That's not enough for spirit magic, but, you know, that's that's enough to see things, right? Um, and we had last session, um, you know, okay, at dawn, what do we see, kind of thing? And you know, the the female baboons came out with the young to go, you know, forage, and there were three male baboons that popped themselves up to you know guard on them, right? Well, that's not going to happen if there's some kind of interaction on the spirit world. So we had to retcon that whole thing. Um, and um, while, and, and for me, it was a learning experience on trying to balance, you know, spotlighting um, a character or capability, um, doing what the party wanted to do, and trying to balance play for the rest of the party. Uh, that's what came down. It, it, was, it was almost a solo session. Um, and perhaps what I should, well, if I would have prepped earlier, I could email the fetch and say, hey, there's something going on with your fetch. I need X number of, of percentile rolls. 
Uh, it still wouldn't have worked very well because of what actually happened. So maybe maybe I could have linked up with the player and just done that separately earlier. Yeah, that's what I probably should have done. But anyway, so um, there was not a whole lot of other, I mean, there's a lot of planning going on because you've got the chariot. Was the chariot going to do? Is it going to go with everybody else? I mean, horses and chariot make much more noise and have larger movement than just, you know, a handful of people walking. Um, is the chariot going to stand aside and, and kind of drive around and, and direct attention as a distraction while everybody tries to sneak over to the complex from the other side? Um, <clears throat> um, are the horses, because um, they made a camp a kilometer back, you know, another another 900 meters from the from the wood line back I was where their camp is and you can you know tether up the horses and leave the chariot there there's no problem with that wandering encounters perhaps but um so there's a lot of discussion on this and that and there was uh, one of the players brought up that he's got the teleport spell um but you know some of the people are already down on the room points because they haven't gone through a a, a worship service at a holy holy day yet and um all this kind of stuff going on. They pretty much decide they need to come in from the West. But the second part of that is, okay, what do we do to the chariot? Do we use a distraction? Do we bring it along? Do we not bring it along? You know, that kind of thing. Um, so there's a lot of discussion of that, which is not recorded. Um, but, the, but then the shaman player shows up. Okay. We want to do this, and of course, that the Sean player wants to play this fetch, right? So, go ahead and do the fetch thing. Fetch has a 10 power, so at 110 meters, it can sense power. Okay, there is the shaman's at the ridge line. Nobody else said they were with the shaman, but at the end of things, okay, yeah, everybody's there, that's not a problem because they would you know, want to protect the shaman anyway. So, it made sense that everybody, be there. okay, so shaman's at the ridge line, talking to fetch, okay. This direction go and so the fetch you know moves out um when it gets within 110 meters it starts to sense the power there's like uh almost 30 i think folks around there um at, at this location because they know where the the light's coming from the underground and that was another discussion if the fetch material materializes it. the fetch comes in the middle world and moves forward um second sight doesn't work through stone so if it's just kind of but the fetch Spirit moves through stone. So as it's moving along, is it going to notice through that one hole? You know, there's there's an aperture. You know, there's a, there's a chance, slim slim chance of somebody being there as it goes over the hole to see. Oh, there's power down there, and then go down closer now since underneath the stone floor, and then it can do, do more stuff, right? Uh, but instead, and that's what I was thinking, possibly being an issue, but the player wasn't even thinking that. Just on the spirit plane, go forward, okay? Because there's got to be a way where the spirit world in the material world meet to be able to sense power okay and i'm not being sexual this way it sense power through through the through the connection right otherwise how to how do ghosts and other spirits you know attack a person you know the the disease spirits are on the spirit world how do they sense that there's somebody there to come up and attack that there's got to be that that sense and so i kind of you know sandwich it you know and um Spirit goes through uh, 110. All these spirits things will at 200 meters. A spirit down there in the spirit world noticed it. Um, so is this coming closer to 110? Um, that's true. I had I had the fetch receive the spirit talk from well spirit talk. Well, the other spirit can do spirit talk at 200 meters. So the fetch is hearing spirit talk, but since the fetch is trying to respond, but the other spirit can't hear because it's not within range of his spirit speech. So it's 200 meters, you know, it stops and it starts coming in until it gets to 110 meters. Or is it 11? Oh yeah, no, you sense. You sense 110, so at 200, it sensed it. So it started coming forward, right? Then at all, at 20 meters, it started, started speaking, 
no response, so it starts to move forward a meter at a time. So it gets to 11 meters. So 11 meters apart, it talks us, Cousin, what are you doing here? Because it sensed the fetches, which is the shaman's, uh, runes at 50% or more, and it's truth in man. So it kind of understands it's probably you know, a Dr. Fall kind of thing, right? So that's why he called him Cousin. What are you doing here? And then the, the fetch is relaying, well, hey, um, I start, start with the cross, cross kids. I'm not sure why. Um, but they don't know anything about the cross kids. Um, and then it starts talking about, hey, we were attacked by some baboons. Um, these are the runes that they had to identify themselves. And you know, see, you know, they are the same runes, right? So at that point, this spirit knows that the fetch is associated with the people they were sent to kill. And now they're coming here. So we got to defend, right? We got to defend, defend the, the home ground. And so it moves forward, spirit combat. So we do some spirit combat. Um, post play, there are some more comments about spirit combat opposed role tie, right? Because in tie, you talk about um, temporarily uh, un, what's the word, unresolved, right? And then it goes on to distractively say. If it's a critical success, they do damage. So I have interpreted that normal success, special success, failure, all unresolved, right? But if they're both critical successes, you know, unresolved, but they both do damage. See, that's not unresolved. Um, so one of the players, you know, brought that up. You know, hey, it, it says here that they both do damage to each other. Actually, it says that on a critical success. Um, so, and, and and I reply back, you know. With all these unresolved, 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 maybe what we should do is go ahead, do damage to each other. That would certainly speed spirit combat up. So I'm thinking about incorporating that. I'll talk to the players about that. Incorporating that into into you know my house rules, right? Okay. So anyway, unresolved, unresolved, special. So he does special damage. That's double damage. Did eight um, magic points of damage. He has spirit screen one up, so he takes seven. Remember, only has power of 11. So it's got 11 magic points. Uh, another tie, another special, another eight points. So the fetch had to shift off um, 10 from 14, uh, four magic points off to the shaman in order to stay conscious, have one magic point left. And so it decides, okay, I'm getting out of here, spirit dance. So next round, um, maybe the spirit dance earlier after the first special he started taking off and so spirit dance happens during the round spirit combat at the end of the round so you can do the spirit dance to get away but he moves faster so he catches up so the spirit combat continues but the, the fetch is moving when he does the spirit dance getting closer to the shaman Essentially, you know, three rounds worth. Um, and, a, and a second special happened because he missed a couple of spirit dances, but there were ties and that kind of thing, right? Um, you spirit dance, if you made it, you move. If you don't, then spirit combat happens that round. So it's a way of delaying the damage kind of deal. Um, but eventually, it took the 14 magic points of damage, which so siphoned four off to the shaman. They get to the shaman. Um, and then there's some discussion about visibility and stuff. And I thought, I thought they're going to cast visibility on the other spirit, right? And bring it forward. Oh, by the way, it looked like a, uh, uh, a silverback ape. And, um, so I'm, I'm reading through the vis visibility spell. And if you cast visibility on a hostile or a non-friendly spirit, there's no saving throw. It just happens. And defensive magics don't work. Normal ones. So I'm going, wow, it's hard to get away if somebody's casting visibility on a spirit. Oh, they do move fast, right? So that's what I was thinking. The is going to, it's going to be visible. It's there. Um, and they're all going to be able to attack it, which is what they're thinking. Okay, well, I'll attack it with all the magics and, and stuff that we've got. Um, but it's going to take off. It's going to cast mobility. It's moving at, at uh, 60 meters and around. So, and, you know, one round, it's almost to the, the um, 
the the ruins the next round it's inside you know that kind of thing right <laughs> so uh, I had, I'm using spirit travel to help keep them coordinated on on where the intended location and stuff is and that kind of deal right um, but no they're going to pull he's going to cast visibly on his fetch bring his fetch visible that way the other spirit in order to keep attacking has to come forward um, and it had to take the whole round to do that in which they can all attack right so but once they they pull the the fetch into the material world the other spirit you know knows everybody else who's here you know feeds it back home okay so back home okay they know <laughs> there's this group of people here at the edge of the forest line so the next morning instead of all the females and, and young going out to forage four male baboons instead of three come up and they, they they situate themselves on the southwestern edges of the ruins you know watching the tree line looking for what's out there right but by this time party's gone back to their their camp um just before dawn they get up um get some meat get ready to go and they travel around now so we were talking before about you know the the baboons foresting foraging now how long would it take to go all around you're far enough away from the foraging that you don't get seen to come all the way around and uh, I was thinking, you know, that's a few kilometers of going around. Initially, I said half an hour or half a day. I'm going, no, that's not right because they're not going that far. Um, so I brought it back um, to, I think, a couple of hours to go all the way around, moving slowly, trying to be quiet, staying out of the way, you know, that kind of thing. But with no baboons out in the woods, you know, they just need be back from the tree line a bit so i figured you know it's probably like 10 minutes to get around but you know me uh rules versus ruling right in order to make a ruling you need to actually stun the rules so that the ruling is at least cons not consistent but similar to what the rule would be right so I'm, okay full turn is how is five minutes it in five minutes you well in a day you can walk um 20 kilometers uh, 20 kilometers over a day, which is, you know, eight hours, and and we're only going for 10 minutes. <laughs> so I did a little math, my head going, this is just out of control. <laughs> and so I did a ruling, 10 minutes. But I tried to find the rule, and I took some time, so you, you'll see in the live play, but watch that kind of thing, that, uh, yeah, I'm spending way too much time digging stuff up. But, you know, I, we're all learning the system still. Okay, so I get around to the other side. And um, I, I brought the picture, I imported the picture to Owlbear Rodeo. Um, I did not realize how big my picture was compared to the um, distance ratios in Owlbear. So I may have to go in and, and readjust a few things. Because <laughs> okay. I pull the icons on, you can barely see them. So you got to zoom really in and we zoom really in on the picture. It's all pixelated and you can't really see. Um, so, and there's actually in the picture a, a a van <laughs> and a couple of people so you can see how big the actual ruins are compared to people and the icons aren't that big so i'm going to, to do some adjustment to, to the sizing and, and and get things up but they they put a uh oh and i imported tokens so i've got you know the baboons are baboons and i pulled in the, the pictures of most people i didn't have miriam but miriam you know upload her her and, and put her out there so we've got all the players but then we have the central icon we're using it for the party right Okay, so this western entrance way they go to is within sight of one of the baboons, but the baboons look in the other way. So I'm just rolling to see, you know, on a special success, the baboon attention is caught and it can turn and look. That's how I was treating it. Um, but they come into the, the entrance way and you can see them. So they try to sneak around this way up to the side, get behind a, a barrier. Uh, and they start, you know, poking around, you know, what's this, what's this, and I've got stuff blacked off, okay. So you go to this area, pop this open area, but then every once in a while they talk about the owl. Now, the owl, thankfully, is not just flying around on top, because if it was flying around on top, the baboons would notice it, and that might get some attention. You know, why is this creature circling around? Now, if it's a hawk or something, that means there's something on the ground that it's trying to get. If it's, um... A vulture then there's something dead out here if it's anything else something's up right <clears throat> so what they're having to do is that will 
kind of fly up, look over the wall, and fly back down. So they're checking spots out. And there's nothing here. I mean, this is dead ruins. It's all, all empty. But there's certain spots that are blocked out. And they see there's a courtyard area. So they're thinking if there's a courtyard, there must be special buildings around it. Well, not necessarily there are buildings around it. And they're going into different buildings and rooms and stuff. There's no no roofs, right? Everything's up open to the air. Um, nothing, nothing, nothing. But after the second time of that happened, going, you know, I should pull out that random um, encounter piece from the broken tower. But I didn't want to, you know, break contact and go dig out my broken tower thing and um, and, and get back to the game because you know, we're, we're pushing time limit at this point. In fact, uh, just for the end of all the, you know, searching here, searching there, searching here, searching there, one of the players had to bow out because he was reaching his end of day. But they cleared out most of the northern there's a northern piece of blackness and uh, a southern piece of blackness and they cleared up most of the northern piece of blackness you know empty buildings empty building you know broken pillars broken walls you know some of the walls are pretty high others have, have been broken down to where you know you can look over to maybe climb up you know six ten feet kind of thing um and then there's a whole swath to the north that's just wide open there wasn't any blackout at all and there's a whole swath to the northeast same thing wide open wasn't blacked out um and so they, they they cleared all that stuff out and that's where the session pretty much ended so yeah it, 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 was, it was a rough session for for some of the players who didn't get to do their thing and and i, I wanted some of that to happen but it, it would have to be okay we're gonna attack so we're gonna like shoot at the boat the baboons to keep their attention distracted but that's not what they ended up doing and it's it's hard it's hard to balance it is happy gaming